Welcome to this tutorial on developing web apps. I am Peter Thompson. We'll start by looking at the basics of HTML code, the Starsheets CSS3, and later we will also look at JavaScript and a server-side language. The HTML code identifies this as being HTML5 and the language as English. We have a head to the document and within the head we identify the character set as UTF-8, a viewport, a link to an external style sheet and a title. Within the body of the page we have a header and in this case it contains an h1 header plus a paragraph of text the main content of the page with an h2 header further content and note that we have closed the tags here The closing body tags and HTML tags are not strictly necessary, but it's always a good idea to add them. This produces the web page. So if we match what we see in the code to what we see in the browser, the document header, my document content, and the text that follows the document content. The style of the content is controlled by the style sheet. A very simple style sheet here. We've set the background color for the body, which is this blue-gray, and we've set a color for the paragraph text which is blue. In this next example, I have added some more uh, HTML content. Again, we've got the doc type as HTML, identifying it as HTML5. Language is English. Similar head. And in the body, I've added further elements so I've added a navigation element um, within the main. We've got also got a header. I've added sections. The first section with uh, H2, the next one with H3. Um, back to a section with H2. We've got a figure that contains an image. The image has its source. We have a caption for the image. The end of the figure. We have a footer to this section. We have an article. Something that stands by itself. End of the main section. And after the main section again we've got a footer and then we've closed the body and the html this page is also linked to a style sheet but at the moment the style sheet is not being displayed because by using the tools in firefox i've commented out all the styles. We've got one style that applies to every element, but at the moment nothing is being displayed. What I'm going to do is uncomment these styles. So first of all, I'll uncomment the border. Every element has now got a border round it. and the border width is now thick. 
you can see that each element is up against the border. So I'm now going to add the padding and the margin. So that's with padding. And finally, I'll uncomment the margin. Now, the purpose of this particular document is to illustrate that each element lives within its own box and the boxes are nested on the screen to match the way that boxes are nested in the HTML. So we've got this here, the introduction to HTML5 within a main element within a header. Then we've got a section with a header to a section part of the main document. So notice that this section is within the main element. So there's the box around the main element. Here's a box around this section element. And we can see visually the elements nested within each other. So within this section, we've got an aside. We haven't placed this aside to one side. It's simply a box nested within another box within this section. And for the image, we can also identify how it fits. So if we look at the caption for the image, that is within the figure section. So here's the figure caption. And we can see it's within the figure section, starting there and here. The image is also within the figure section. The figure sits within this section. This section has a header here. So we can match up the elements of our HTML with the elements on the page and it's important that you're able to do this so identify components in the html and match them up with the component on the web page so there we've got our heading one within a header within the main content and the style sheet Again, linked from the head of this HTML document. And you can see that we've applied the same style to all these elements that we're using. They've all got a solid, thick border with this padding and a margin. The next aspect we want to examine on this same HTML file is the way that a page responds to a wide or a narrow screen. So if I make the browser window wider and narrower, if we look at the lines of text here, we can observe how they respond as the page width changes. So at that point, it's occupying the full width, and then it automatically starts to wrap. As I make it smaller, you can see that all the elements are wrapping until that is the minimum size that Firefox will go to. You can see that one word here is overlapping its box. It's not breaking to fit in. And the image as well isn't going as small as the minimum size of the box that contains it. So without any CSS, a web page is quite responsive to the width of the screen. And it's best to start 
with a web page that responds in this way without any additional code and then decide what extra code is needed to get the effect that's desired. This box model of the web page also helps us understand the document object model. By highlighting each element with a box, we can visualize how each of these elements sits within another element. To navigate from an inner element to another element, we can go to the containing box, to its containing box, to its containing box, and in this case we go out to the containing box here, and then we can navigate back down into another, con another enclosed box. We can only navigate one box at a time. So from this element, we can go out into the document header. Another way of displaying this is as a tree of the document elements. So this tree also illustrates the document object model. Enclosing everything is our doc type element and the HTML within that. Then we can see we have a head and the head elements. We've got the body and within the body we have all the body elements. So within the body we've got a header and a head to element and the text, the document header. Within our main element, we've got a header, h1, and this introduction to HTML5. So this element here is the same as this text element here. This section here is the next element within the main part of the HTML document. So we can navigate up and down through this tree. Now, when we start using JavaScript, we can navigate the DOM by following these links from parent to child element to the next child element to the next child element. To get from an element embedded deeply inside the tree, we would have to navigate up through the tree. So that one is an aside text within a paragraph, within an aside, within a section, and that section is within another section, which is in the main part of the document. Walking through the document object model in this way is known as navigating the DOM. And sometimes this ability is very useful in JavaScript. On other occasions, we might more frequently use the ID of an element to identify it specifically and go straight there. Sometimes when we want to know if an element has been clicked or not, or control mouse overs, then we will want to know the parent of an element. So the document object model can be visualized as a tree or as a set of nested boxes. And as we develop concepts in JavaScript, we will make a lot of use of this model.